Hello all again. Um, someone asked for a video going through the solutions of question 12 and 13 from exercise 14e, um, which is the exercise on circles. Um, so here are question 12 and question 13. So I'll get going with those. Um, right here. So question 12. Find the equation of the circles which touch, and it's a plural here, um, circles which touch the x-axis have a radius of 5 and pass through the point 0, 8. Okay, um, so to help explain this, I'm just going to do a sketch. Um, so it touches the x-axis, so the circle just has to touch the x-axis, has a radius of 5 and passes through the point 0, 8. So 0, 8, we'll say is up here. Zero eight. Now for it to have a radius of five, um it's certainly not going to be a circle like that because the center would be up here and that radius is certainly bigger than five. It actually needs to be bigger than eight. Um if we will um actually let's go control Z. The even the smallest one if we had it coming through if it just touched that point and came round, even then the radius um in that case would be eight. So it's certainly not like that. Now the way we can get a radius of five to go through the point zero eight would actually be and to just touch would actually be something like that. Okay, radius is in here. That point somewhere is up five. So our radius is five. Um, that radius there is five. So that's one of the circles. Now we can also get the exact same thing coming through that way. Okay, distance of five up to there. Distance of five down to there. So we actually get. There's two circles that can make this work, so we're going to find equations of two lines. Um, so let's start with our equation of circle is x minus h all squared plus um, y minus k all squared equals r squared. Now straight away we know r is equal to 5, so we can put that in. Um, and we also know that the center of my circle, for the, for the circle to just touch the x-axis, and in these two situations, recognizing this, um, we can see that k also needs to be 5. So we can substitute that in straight away. We get x minus h all squared plus y minus 5 must be equal to 5 squared. Um, we know that it goes through the point 0, 8, so we can now substitute that in to figure out what are the two h values that make this work. Um, so let's give that a go. So straight away, um, we'll put that in. We're going to sub in 0, 8 to make this work. So we get uh, x oh, 0 minus h all squared plus 8 minus 5 all squared is equal to 5 squared. So we get negative h all squared plus 3. All squared is equal to 5 squared. So negative h squared is we get h squared. Um, because the negative doesn't matter. That gets squared. Disappears. Um, is equal to. Now 5 squared is 25. Take away 9. So we get h squared is equal to 16. So h is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16. So h is equal to plus or minus 4. So our equations are two equations. Let's put the positive one in. First we get x minus 4 all squared plus y minus 5 all squared is equal to 5 squared. And then the other one is x plus 4 all squared plus y minus 5 all squared is equal to 5 squared. 
So that's that one. So it takes a little bit of reasoning, thinking about what's the actual geometry. How is this going to work? If it goes through 0, 08, that's up pretty high, considering it has a radius of 5 and has to reach all the way down and, and has that keyword touch. So it's not passing through. Um, it just touches the x-axis there and it just touches the x-axis there. All right, question 13. Let me move this down. We'll do question 13. Right, find the circle, find the equation of the circle which passes through the points 0, 2, 2, 0, and negative 4, 0. So let's plot that and see what that's going to look like. Okay. And we'll try and have some half decent scale here so we can be somewhat accurate in our inter interpretation. Right from me. Okay, so it's going through negative four zero. Going through there. It's also going through zero two. So there and it's going through two zero. Okay. Now, um, there is a trick in this that people get caught out with in thinking, oh, it's going through there, and they draw the circle something like this, going through there and around, and they think, oh, well, that's over at negative 4, 0, and this is across over at 2, 0, so straight away they think radius is 3, okay? and they think the center is right there halfway between the two points but that doesn't actually work it's a real gotcha because that would mean this distance here would have to radius being three and that's going through zero comma two and if you do a quick check of that if that works um, with pythagoras that being one across and that two this radius here would actually be r squared is equal to 2 squared plus 1 squared, so we get r squared is equal to 4 plus 1, so r is equal to the square root of 5, which is certainly not 3. So this doesn't work. This shortcut of trying to recognize that radius is 3 is actually wrong. Um, so I'm going to undo all of that and show you what the actual circle is going to look like. Almost there. Okay, we need to realize that the top center will, yes, be halfway between those two, that point there and that point there. But if we look at the scale, it actually means we get something, and that's a terrible shape. Um, but need to realize to match this curvature through there, um, it keeps going out and getting wider. And the widest point will somewhere be here and here. Um, so the center must be somewhere down in this area. Um, it's certainly not between that intercept and that intercept. Um, or the radius to work out correctly. So what we're going to do is we just have to substitute in these three points um, and use simultaneous equations to help solve for this. The... <laughs> We can still use recognize, though, like I said, um, if the circle's going through these two points that are at the same height, um, we can still recognize that our uh, h value is negative 1. The center there is at negative 1. Um, we don't know how far down it is, but it's certainly at h equals negative 1, using symmetry. Um, so let's get going with that. So we have, sorry, I'm a little bit fuzzy at the moment, x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared equals r squared. Straight away we know h plus 1 all squared plus y minus k all squared is equal to r squared. So we have that. 
Um, and now we're just going to sub in some points. I would suggest, what are we going to, let's just sub in, see what happens. These ones, they have zeros in them. See what we get. So I'm going to sub in 0, 0,2. So I get 1 all squared plus 2 minus k all squared is equal to r squared. Somewhat helpful. Um, well, we've got a k and an r still. I might try this other one. Let's sub in a 2 comma 0. So we're going to get 2 plus 1 all squared plus uh, 0 minus k all squared is equal to r squared. So we get 3 squared plus negative k squared is equal to r squared. Um, and this is, I'm not sure exactly how this is going to pan out, but I'm just subbing in different points um, and building some equations from this. We've got three points and there's three unknowns that we're unknowns that we're trying to find. We're trying to figure out, well, we figured out what H, we're trying to figure out what K is and we're trying to figure out what R is. Um, and we've got enough data points that we're going to have some form of simultaneous situation. Um, and I'm just playing around with it. So I've got nine. Uh, this is going to, the negative K squared is just going to turn to K squared is equal to R squared. And let's sub in the other point. Um, not going to be the other point, negative four zero. Okay, um, so subbing in that one, we're going to get negative four plus one all squared plus zero minus k all squared equal to r squared. We get negative 3 all squared minus k all squared is equal to r squared. So I get 9 plus k squared is equal to r squared. So if subbing in both those two points, I actually get identical equations. You get that one there, and that one there. They're identical, so that's effectively useless in forms of simultaneous. So I'm going to have to work with this equation here, and I'm going to have to work with this equation here. Um, Rightio, so let's crack on. I'm thinking, trying to do elimination. Oh, do, actually no, we can do elimination really easy because we've got equals R squared, we've got equals R squared. Um, so we could sub one into the other. We can also do elimination. Uh, the reason we can make one equation equal to the other quickly, say, and if I just look at a simple uh, linear example, we have that's equal to y, and we have 3 plus x also equal to y, and we're trying to figure out when they're the same. Because this is equal to y, we're effectively actually substituting that in there because it is equal to y. We're taking that y out, and we're putting in this 3 plus x. Since we have this equation is equal to r squared, and this one is also equal to r squared, I can put that where that r squared is. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that substitution and I'm also getting a bit of advantage because of that squared signs disappearing for me. So I'm going to end up doing that substitution, I get 9 plus k all squared is equal to uh, that 1 squared from up here is just 1 plus 2 minus k all squared. Um, just need to do some expansion equal to 1 plus, uh, if you remember the shortcut for expanding this square, we're going to get the first one squared, uh, these two terms multiply together, then times by 2, so we get minus 4k, then plus k squared. Now we just need to do some solving, so we get do, 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 9 plus uh, that k squared, we're going to bring this k squared over, so minus k squared is equal to 5 minus 4k, 
squared is cancelled, so we get 9 is equal to 5 minus 4k. Take 5 over, take 5 from both sides, so we get 4 is equal to negative 4k. Divide both sides by, so we get 4, 4 is equal to k, so k is equal to negative 1. So we can substitute that back in to our original equation that we were working with here. We would already figured out the h, so we get x plus 1 all squared plus y. We're putting the minus in, and because there's the minus sign here, that turns positive, so that's also plus 1 all squared is equal to r squared. Um, we now need to find our r value, which should be a lot easier because we figured out k, we can use um, that equation there, sub in k to figure out r, or we can also do this one up here. I'm going to do this bottom one, um, just because it's a little bit of an easier equation to work with. So, subbing in k equals negative 1 into the 9 plus k squared equals r squared, yet 9 is equal to ooh, 9 plus 1 all squared r squared, we get 9 plus 1 is equal to r squared, so we get 10 is equal to r squared, so we get root 10 is equal to r, plus or minus root 10 is equal to r, radius cannot be negative, so we get root 10 is equal to r. Okay. So we figured out our r value, which we can substitute in. So Instead of the r, put a square root 10 in there, and since square root of 10 and we're squaring it, we can finally write x plus 1 all squared plus y plus 1 all squared is equal to 10. Square root squared just cancels out. So that's it, that's our final equation right there. Um, takes a bit of work, there's some nasty somewhat nasty simultaneous equations in there, um, but the k squareds ended up cancelling, which was somewhat good. But that's how you go about it. Um, the big trick here was recognising if we have the two intercepts, the circles are passing through it, um, so that means the centre of the circle, horizontally at least, must be symmetrically between those two points. It doesn't mean it's exactly at that point, it'll be somewhere along that line there, which happened to be at x equals negative 1. So our h value is negative 1. And then working simultaneous equations from there. I hope that helps. That's it.